everyone, after playing Spider-Man and Miles Morales, I started reflecting upon my top 10 favorite Marvel Comics superheroes. This is about superheroes that are my favorites in Marvel Comics. Not in the films, not in the MCU, but in the comic books. It was a tough list because Marvel has so many great heroes that Steve Ditko, Jack Kirby, and Stan Lee created, as well as other people throughout the numerous decades. There's just so many marvelous characters that are grounded in reality. Your unconventional superheroes that basically were modernized in the 21st century and showed us all that we can be heroes. Anyway, to start off with an honorable mention would be Namor. Submariner is pretty much like Marvel's Aquaman, you know. He's the king of Atlantis. He's an Atlantean. And that's pretty much what you need to know. He's Marvel's Aquaman. I really love how he kind of started as an anti-hero slash villain but really has his own code of rules, own conduct when taking care of stuff with his kingdom and going after other people that invade his kingdom. I really love him as a character. At first glance, he could be a villain, but at the same time, he's a hero that does what's necessary to protect his people. And he's a very underrated superhero that I really wish was in the films more. He hasn't had a film yet, and it's a character that's one of the more popular underrated characters of the Marvel comics. Starting off at number 10, my favorite hero is Scarlet Witch. You know, she's the daughter of Magneto, her brother's Quicksilver. Scarlet Witch is awesome in the MCU, but she's even more awesome in the comic books. I love her relationship with Vision. You know, the whole West Coast Avengers arc is probably one of my favorites. Scarlet Witch is a character that's a mutant, but also someone who goes into her own journey outside the X-Men and the Avengers in the Marvel Universe, and she is extremely powerful. One of the more underrated superheroines that I just absolutely love from the comics. After that, at number nine is Captain America. You know, he is... Marvel's Superman. He is truth justice in the American way for Marvel. As a matter of fact, it's kind of interesting seeing his journey start off as kind of a propaganda piece during World War II, seeing him fight against Hydra, Red Skull, basically Nazis. I love that famous cover with him punching Adolf Hitler. But more than anything, he ends up basically embodying America at different points of our history, you know? You see the 70s, 80s, Vietnam, onto modern era, post 9-11. He really is a symbol for America and is the conscience of America. I love the new line, you know, he got killed after Civil War. So I love the new line of him waking up and he sees Charlottesville. But instead of the alt-right neo-Nazis, it's Hydra, which is pretty much the same thing. And that's interesting. I always love how you bring the best of America, like Americana from the World War II era. And you put him into our modern world where things aren't as, let's say, black and white as they were when he was around. Such a great story of being the skinny kid who has courage, bravery, goes through a program, becomes a super soldier, basically, and then is uncovered from being in a block of ice. Such a cool story. I love the stuff with Bucky, the Winter Soldier, and different stuff with Hydra, and him becoming a leader and main character in the Avengers. Overall, it's one of my favorite characters from the Marvel comics, and I'm so happy that Chris Evans played him in a serious way, and they made Captain America awesome. Who could forget the shield throw? I mean, honestly, anybody who's played Marvel Ultimate Alliance, you know what I mean. After that, at number eight is Iron Man. Iron Man was kind of a C-list hero before Robert Downey Jr. played him. Like, really? He's more popular now. He's an A-list hero, and I love Iron Man. Tony Stark, Robert Downey Jr. is perfect. As Tony Stark, he was perfect. But what I love the most about Tony Stark is he's a flawed individual, you know? I love his brilliant mind creating the Iron Man tech and different things, but also he has his own personal demons that the movies barely scratch the surface on. Demon in the Bottle is one of my favorite stories of Iron Man, not facing against just enemies, facing against himself with alcoholism. That is such a deep story that other comic books did not dare go into until the 80s, and that's what I love Marvel for. This show is super human beings, but they're still human beings with human problems, despite having superpowers. And Iron Man is one of my favorites from the comics, and definitely now after the movies, he's been reinvented, and I think he's even more relevant now than when he first appeared in Marvel Comics. After that, at number seven is the Fantastic Four. I'm a huge fan of the Fantastic Four. I love the first two movies, but they haven't had a definitive Fantastic Four film, and I'm kind of upset. 
Disney, Marvel, make it. You've made it already. It's called The Incredibles. That's what they need to do. Bring that energy. I love Doctor Doom. He's one of my favorite villains. But with the Fantastic Four, you have Mr. Fantastic, Invisible Woman, Human Torch, and The Thing. The Thing is one of those characters. It's kind of like the Hulk in a way of dealing with appearance or, or like Beast from the X-Men. But... They all go through some type of superpower after their accident in space. But I love the thing story and how sad it is of him looking different and dealing with his appearance, you know. That is such a cool thing. But I love what the, what I love the most about Fantastic Four is the family aspect, you know. Reed Richards and Susan Storm are married. Johnny Storm's her brother. It's a family unit, and that is very rare in the superhero world. You have leagues, you have Avengers, but very rarely do you have a true family. And the Fantastic Four is a true Marvel family. After that, at number six is the Incredible Hulk. I love Hulk. Like, Hulk is one of my favorite characters. Bruce Banner, you know, with gamma radiation, transforming into the Hulk, having anger issues. That is something that's so primal that we all have a different side that we try to suppress, that we don't want to come out. We all deal with that, and that's such a genius idea of like this Dr. Jekyll and Hyde with this hulking figure. I love the different Hulk enemies, and Hulk is just cool. Whether it's from the comics, to the TV shows, to the movies, on to now. Overall, The Incredible Hulk is one of my favorite superheroes, and She-Hulk is also an underrated one. Can't wait to see how that turns out. After that, at number five is The Punisher. Now, Frank Castle could be considered a vigilante. He's not really a superhero, but I count him as a Marvel hero. The Punisher is one of my favorites, and it's because he's human. I mean, he practically started off as a villain in his first appearance in Spider-Man, but we get to learn more about him. You know, his time in S.H.I.E.L.D., his time losing his family, and he's been modernized time and time again, whether it's through the Vietnam War, the Gulf War, or even to now. I love what the movies and show have done. Frank Castle is just an awesome, ruthless character. One of my favorite lines is the Max series and the Welcome Back Frank storyline. Those two are like great Punisher stories. And overall, it's nice having this human being, kind of like Batman if he decided to kill in the Marvel Universe. And he's just one of my favorites. It, it, it's not vengeance, it's punishment. After that, at number four is Ghost Rider. More specifically, Daniel Ketch. Danny Ketch. Forget about the other guy with the Mustang. Forget about Johnny Blaze. Danny Ketch is where it's at. I love Ghost Rider. That was my introduction to it. My brother had issue one, and I love his character. You know, him trying to save his sister, going after Death Watch, Blackout, numerous villains, adding the spikes and the bike. I love the look of this Ghost Rider, the dark storytelling. This is what Ghost Rider needs to be on film. And it's sad that we haven't got there. We got the technology. We just haven't had the acting and the story. And I, I believe there is a yet to be made definitive Ghost Rider film still yet to be made that's out there. And I hope they take a chance after doing uh, Blade with Mahershala Ali. I hope they go Midnight Suns and go Ghost Rider. But Danny Ketch is my favorite Ghost Rider and one of my favorite Marvel superheroes from the 80s and 90s. After that, at number three is Daredevil, the man without fear. Daredevil, I got into it with a Ben Affleck film. I love it. I love the Charlie Cox show, but the comics are so well done. Whether it's him in his first appearance, gold, black, whether it's him in the red outfit, the Frank Miller, born again story, the stuff with Electra. I absolutely love the story of Matt Murdock, you know, him becoming blind, but then hearing, he's pretty much like Marvel's Batman as far as like having sonar. And I absolutely love Matt Murdock being a lawyer and then going after people who are wronged, going after criminals who get away as Daredevil. The stuff with Wilson Fisk Kingpin is excellent. I love the friendship he has with Foggy Nelson and Karen. And overall, Daredevil is just an awesome superhero. I love him teaming up with other people in the Marvel Universe. Him and Spider-Man's team-ups have always been my favorite in the comics. And yeah, he is one of my favorite Marvel heroes. After that, at number two, this is going to be kind of a cop-out, but I'm going to count the entire X-Men. Besides the villains, you have all the heroes. Wolverine, Professor X, Jean Grey, Cyclops, Beast, uh, Iceman, Nightcrawler, Archangel, Gambit, Rogue, even though she started out as a villain. Jubilee, yeah, Jubilee is probably the lamest one with the fireworks, but still, I count her. Like, all the heroes, Banshee. X-Men is just awesome. I love the entire X-Men universe, and I love that it's an allegory for the civil rights movement. You know, you can totally see Professor X like Martin Luther King, Magneto more like Malcolm X. And I love how that allegory in civil rights gets reinvented with each generation, and X-Men is an embodiment of that. It's a different type of superhero. 
as people who have these extraordinary abilities but are looked down upon. They're faced with prejudice. They're not accepted into the world. And there's also people who like to abuse those wonderful powers through mutation. So I absolutely love the themes of X-Men and they're one of my favorite heroes out of all the Marvel Universe. Like X-Men just owns the Marvel Universe. Like seriously, I love the X-Men. Above that at number one, I mean, come on, there's one hero that's my favorite. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, go web, go. Spider-Man is just awesome because he's a young superhero. Peter Parker is like you and me. You know, nerds, geeks, just a regular human being, gets bit by a radioactive spider, deals with human problems, has to balance a superhero life with his ordinary life. With great power comes great responsibility. I love his origin with Uncle Ben's murder. Him not doing something to stop it, and then figuring out that he has to be more responsible and to stop it from happening ever again. Such a great hero. Gwen Stacy, Captain Stacy, Mary Jane, Harry Osborne. All the stuff there, Venom, like his whole lineup, the new Miles Morales reinvention is just fantastic. And Spider-Man is my favorite Marvel hero, you know, and Stan Lee does something wonderful by having a young superhero. Like all the teenagers were pretty much sidekicks. They never had a teenage superhero. And it was nice seeing a teenage superhero in comics, someone we, we could relate to, but also grow with as he went to college and, and into adulthood. Definitely my favorite superhero for Marvel. Anyway, those are my top 10 favorite Marvel Comics superheroes. Feel free, let me know down in the comments below, what are your favorite heroes from Marvel Comics? Let me know. Feel free to subscribe for more videos. Check out these videos for more content. You can feel free to follow me at Fred Film Fanatic on both Instagram and the Stardust app. Till next time, everyone, Excelsior. Remember, not all heroes wear capes. Some wear a mask. So stay safe and healthy out there.